I want to call the select board meeting to order October 8th, 1 o'clock. First thing is additions and deletions. I don't have anything. No. No. Citizens' comments about anything but the aqueduct. There's going to be comments on the Oh, yeah, yeah. This is. No, no, yeah, this is just anything. Anything not on the agenda. Anything not on the agenda. Okay, now we skip skip to adjournment. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to dis discuss the acquisition of the Woodstock Aqueduct Company. State your name. Hi there. Byron Kelly again. Hi, Bob. Hi. Um, just a couple of things. The last time I asked about the completion of the engineering study, yep. you said it would be online. It's not online. It's going to go online today. I apologize. Okay. Uh, we sent it over today to have it updated. Okay. Um, because that was one of the things I was waiting for. A big question I have off there is in Appendix A, it referred to on the on the 90% done, but Appendix A, I don't think was included in it. What's the total number of current people on the water system? So there we know people. I think we know parcels. There's there, connections. Yeah, how many there, total connections? There are two numbers. One is um, connections, and one is actual um, parcels. So it's 992 connections, and then 720 parcels. Okay. And one of the reasons I was asking that question is because in the engineering study, I believe it refers to. One of the other questions I had last time is after assuming the purchase goes through, assuming no one appeals it and requests a special meeting to, if it didn't go their way, um, my question was, if besides 1B, which includes 1A and 1B, yeah. and, and the purchase itself, is I asked, what is the plan for the rest of the options on how are those going to be funded? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be funded by the, the users or are they not? And the reason I asked what the appendix was, was in the engineering study, it says there's 2,473 users, which I didn't think there was. If you look at page 41 on the engineering study, uh, where it refers to alternate one B and two. I don't have to let me look at that number. And so it's like, well, are they? Is it? Is this number planning on not creating a water district district like we currently are? And sorry, what page is that? <laughs> page forty-one. Is that what you said, Byron? Page forty-one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's a number of users under the table. There's a table. Yeah, there. right now. Yeah, that's not the math we've been no. using. Uh, and, and that's why I'm asking the question now, because when I saw uh, that and then I asked, it seems misleading. Is is if because this is going without an Australian ballot and a floor vote, that this could be a real issue <clears throat> later on. Um, on and I know Chris Miller mm -hmm. said the only fair way, and I agree with him, is to continue with the water district. I, I do agree, though, that the town, this is me personally, not, not everyone, mm -hmm. that the town should authorize this and probably should be responsible for the 1A and B. Mm -hmm. I don't know if when, because you set the rates, later and i don't know what your feelings are on this and the taxpayers don't either and that's going to be a big issue later and that's why i asked that too yeah. but with these numbers changing it's one thing you say oh there's 2400 it's going to cost 138 dollars for the users but that's not really the users the users are are a third of that um were you planning on having every taxpayer who's not connected pay the user fee. Uh, so that was my my biggest question, yeah. Too, yeah. even from last time, along with that correction that I noticed was an error. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's what we're, the bulk of what we're going to be talking about today, Byron, actually. Okay. So, yeah. But the total number of tax parcels is much lower. It's 1897. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Hyde, uh, trustee, Blake Hill, Townhouse Association. Kind of follow up that question is for Blake Hill, we are a water district. We have a pump house. But we abide by what the state requires. As an example, they just install backup generator, uh, circulator in our pump house. So my question becomes, for non-users, we've never been a customer of the aqueduct services, um, never would be. Uh, what would be the potential cost, if any, to people, 26 owners at Blake Hill? Yeah. So to Laura's point, we're going to be talking about some of that today and next Tuesday as well of the breakdown of where the fees will be for everyone. Um, so that'll be a conversation today and next week. Um, I do just want to say once again for the record that <laughs> all parcels in Woodstock currently pay money towards the aqueduct. So even if you're in Blake Hill, if you pay taxes to the town, part of that tax rates is money for hydrant fees that we pay to the aqueduct. We have no access to a hydrant. It doesn't no, matter. It doesn't matter. You still pay the hydrant fee. It doesn't matter. You still pay the hydrant fees. So would that fee go up if the town should purchase the aqueduct? The fees are going to go up regardless. They're just going to go up more. If the so we'd be paying for a service that we would not be receiving? You do receive the service in the guise of fire protection. It's where the tank fill is. Fire protection, working with David Green currently. Right. At one time, we had a fire hydrant and water system. Yeah. That, uh, before my time, I've been there 14 years, that was defunct. We are now under David's guidance, uh, looking at installing two options, either a pond for water, rescue water, fire purposes, or buried tanks. So again, it would not be water from a fire hydrant. To my, to my, I, my knowledge, I think the last fire hydrant is by the welcome sign going into Woodstock across from uh, worthy kitchen. Mm -hmm. So again, I, the, the idea of fire protection from Woodstock uh, water source, water supply uh, would again be provided by Blake Hill residents. So right now, um, Akrak charges a town uh, $90 per hydrant four times a year. That comes out to about $30,000 that the town collects in your taxes each year. It's a line item under the fire department budgets. If you look at the town reports, you'll see a line item for that. The aqueduct right now is in front of the Public Utility Commission asking to increase that fee from $90 to $900 a quarter per hydrant, which would go from $30,000 to $319,000 a year. That would be in your tax rates if this goes through. Even though we are not. Correct. It, we collect it through all taxpayers. And all taxpayers pay for the water in the municipal buildings, such as the schools, this building. Um, I'm sure the county passes on the, the water that the courthouse and the sheriff's office, which are county owned buildings. So we all, even aside from the hydrants, we're all paying for water. And, um, you know, I live in South Woodstock. There's 22 dry hydrants. In the in South Woodstock that were put in by South Woodstock community members, not a single taxpayer dollar. I think one was one was a grant. Um, so you know I don't necessarily <clears throat> use the hydrants either, but one of the reasons we all live here too is the vibrancy <clears throat> of our village. And you know we've already lost one entire building um, due to fire, and our fire hydrants right now are not up to snuff. And if there was a fire. You know, I know you and your wife walk through the village a lot and enjoy the beauty of it. And, you know, I think we all have a vested interest in you, making sure that we have safe fire equipment, including hydrants. But again, for our fighting purposes, uh, it would be back to what water we supply at Blake Hill, not what the town or village would supply. Yeah, and I think it's a really slippery slope to start getting into who pays for what and when. I mean, you know, I know this came up with the school bond, people who don't have kids here saying that they shouldn't have to pay for the school. I think it's really tricky, and I think we're trying to balance everybody's needs, but 
I, like Susan said, like if our village were to lose fire protection, uh, it would change the fabric of our community. It would change our, our certainly our economic outlook for sure. And that's something that we care about. The village and the town exist in a symbiotic relationship. The town needs the village, the village needs the town. Non-users need users, users need non-users. So, um, you know, I think that also we've talked about the fact that if we own it, hopefully in the future, there is a possibility of extending the water connections further down east, um, which would not be possible right now under Woodstock Aqueduct ownership. And again, being a water district, we would not be interested in, in tying into a system that uh, we are invested hundreds of thousands of dollars on our own system. And that's for every house we can add your taxes, the tax base in Woodstock goes up and your taxes go down. Right now, we can't add any house to the water system. So, you know, again, it, it, it may not directly provide you water, but it provides you a benefit. I reiterate the benefit. Everything we've just talked about, enhanced, you know, enhancing the village, um, reducing the tax burden to all of us by being able to build housing. Can you come up? Come on up, please. My name is Barbara Otranto, and I was just wondering, you say we can't add any more housing on what we have. Who determined that? We can't add any more connections right now to the water system. Well, who determined that? So right now, the aqueduct is under their own moratorium. Uh, under so what? Under, under their own moratorium. I'm not doing any new connections. Um, with my conversations with the state of Vermont, if the aqueduct did not put their own moratorium in place, they were going to come in and put their a moratorium from the state in place to not add any new connections. And what's that based on? Like based on pressure. there's not enough water flow and pressure flowing through the system to accommodate any new connections in Woodstock. And buying it, we're going to add more water somehow? Yep. So oh. the first capital project that the town's done a bond for um, is to change the 8-inch eight eight inch pipe coming down Route 4 west into the village to a 12-inch pipe, which will then help increase more water flow into the village. And what would stop Jaira from doing that now? They're going to do that too if this acquisition doesn't go through. That, that has to happen whether the town owns it or the aqueduct owns it. Mm -hmm. The difference is we'll get lower interest rates. We'll get a potential for grants compared to appropriate appropriations. The aqueduct will not. And they'll have to bond for it at higher interest rates. And that interest rate will be paid by the users and um, non-users. The bottom line is it's going to cost more money for the aqueduct to continue owning the company than it will for the town. Well, that may be so, but if the village is the, what the 777 people that are hooked into this are the primary um, beneficiaries of this, I really have a hard time thinking that anybody that has their own well should be charged at the same price or that this is going to go not be thought about as an Australian vote and separate the bond rail from the water. I, it's all very confusing to me. I just don't understand. Yeah, I'm happy, so, I'm happy to give you a timeline right. if you want. Well, I think I've heard it, but I get really confused. I was hoping other people <laughs> would have questions that would clarify it for me. I mean, I understand I don't want the village burning down. Nobody wants the village burning down. That's like, uh, that's kind of like, I don't know, that's just a redheaded herring thrown in there. Um, but I think like um, Bill said, if he's paying for his water and his sewer, um, those people that are not beneficiaries of this purchase should not be charged the same. And, um, you know, that's just my thinking. I don't know why that seems out of range for you folks. I don't know. I don't think it's out of range for us. I, it's this board's belief that everybody is a beneficiary of the water system for the reasons outlined by Susan. And users are always going to have to pay usage fees. And we're going to talk about that hopefully if we get to the funding discussion and what those will be. I'm sorry, um, I'm holding you up on That's that. okay. No, I, I think it's important to make sure we're here. Yeah, this is why we're here. Mm -hmm. um, people. As far as, you know, having the separate votes, we felt like having them together 
uh, in terms of the acquisition and also the bonds for the capital projects and the Vondel would be rushed and not give everybody a chance to understand completely what they were voting on. The reason we're having the vote in October is because the state gave us a deadline in September to spend grant funding that they had already allocated for us and given us a two year expiration date and had given us a month to spend that. Um, we were giving you what? A month to spend it? Yes, to allocate it. And who is the contact in the state that makes that kind of demand on us? Uh, basically so the, the governor. Funny? The governor. Basically the governor. And um, who is advising him on that kind of stuff? Like this is. Like, I mean, I can't speak to the governor's advisors. I mean, um, so what, really, what, I, mean, what I can say, the re my understanding is is thus: the money is from the federal government, passed yeah. through the ARPA funds. Um, December thirty first, the federal government requires all those funds to be under contract. So you have to have a contract with someone to do the work for those funds. The governor in the state was worried that if they waited until December 30th to get a, make sure everyone had those funds available, and if a vote failed or a contract wasn't signed, that money would not be allocated. The state and the governor want to be able to say to every resident in Vermont, we got X amount of dollars from the federal government, and every single dollar was allocated to a project in Vermont. Because if money's not allocated by December 31st, it goes back to the federal government. So that is my understanding of why they changed the rules on us at the last minute. Okay, thank you. Our our plan all along, Barbara, was that you know we would we would present this to the voters as a whole, and you know that and we had I think three meetings trying to decide when the governor did this how we were going to go about it, and you know our options were basically because we're not borrowing money. The five of us could have said, we're going to buy the water company, and then we'll ask you for the money later to do the repairs um, and talk about Vondell. Or we could do what we're doing now is ask you permission to ask the voters to vote to buy the water company and put off the other measures until we have more time to discuss it or try to do it all at once. And we decided on the middle course. We didn't feel comfortable saying we're going to buy the water company on our own without voter input. Um, but we also didn't feel ready to discuss the capital improvements that are going to be need to, need to be made and the Vondell um, in such a compressed time frame. once once we kind of had the rug pulled out from under us. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that the rug is pulled out. You know, if a grant is available. Could, yeah. you, just, could you just um only only because Kitty's got to take the minutes. Or yeah. so. <laughs> it's, it, there's a not a rug being pulled out. You, you, there's money available, which is very nice. But if that wasn't so, what would you guys be doing? Um, we pro we would have I I we haven't just we didn't have have to discuss that, but we probably would have had to do it all at once to bond yeah. the purchase of the water company as well. And right now we're we're using the money from the state and money that we have available in the town funds to buy the base company. And then we'll we'll be doing this every week, I think, from <laughs> December to talk to you more about the different projects that that are going to be required to improve the water company and and also talk about Vondel Reservoir. But these grants and those would have to be a bond. Yeah. But right now we're not borrow in order to buy the aqueduct, there's no borrowing, there's nothing going on anyone's tax bills. And one other question. <laughs> these things pop into my head. I'm sorry. Um, how long has the, the water company been private? Since its creation in 1876. So private. Mostly for the village, I would say, right? It goes into know. the town, the, the school, uh, oh, the school, the senior center, um, uh, up Carlton Hill. Carlton Road, yes. No, it extends past the village. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no question okay. online. Is Carrie the only one? Uh, and Lauren Dorsey from the standard.
do we want to talk at all about yeah we need to anything else um yeah so <laughs> i think uh last meeting we kind of went through um the okay. capital projects uh we thought were necessary um <laughs> let me see if i can pull it up if not do we show your, your stream last time laura yeah i can do it I let me it. join zoom all right i have it here let me just okay yeah, my apologies i was in yellowstone with a bad connection <laughs> last week um bigger um so i don't have uh the, the new duration that laura put on uh, the other day um but one of the pro uh cal project talked about is the elm street uh suspension repair um so everyone knows that uh the pipe that used to go under the river um broke during the the flood it's been on a pipe kind of to the hydrants on the sidewalk for the last 15 months or so um the aqueduct had got a quote for it originally. They never had the uh, funds to actually do the repair. Um, so this is one of the projects we've talked about bonding for originally, uh, immediately um, to 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 complete as soon as possible. Um, as the board in favor of. Can you make it a little bigger? Sorry. Um, uh, in favor, including this in the original. Yes. Bond. Yeah. This is like a very, yeah. this is a very visible improvement we can make. I mean, it's shocking to me given how many visitors we have today and over the past month that that pipe is still on the bridge. Um, and I think it's like really easy to forget that it was once connected by a fire hose. The town owned that pipe. The town owned the aqueduct. We could have repaired it last year and got FEMA funding for it. Private companies can't get FEMA funding. No, even, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think uh, we all unfortunately know the reality that the flood last year is not the last major storm we're going to have coming through Woodstock, uh, the way the weather has changed. Um, so by owning this, any emergency uh, will get FEMA funded if it's granted by the federal government. Um, okay. Um, the next one is a uh, the new well and pup replacement. Um, I'll say this is important for me, uh, if only because it creates a reserve capacity within the system. Um, having the new well and the new pump will help us meet our average day demand and our permitted maximum daily demand in a shorter time frame, um, which is really important for the infrastructure. So I'm in favor of including this. And the reasoning for this is that silted in basically the well i think they have a life a life space. They have right, a the life well space. is silted okay. in it needs to be re-drilled yes 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 and so for everybody that doesn't know the wells are on route 12 that we have three wells only two of which are online and those wells pump all the water to the tank at cox district road and they're also pumping during high demand Uh, what's the failings, the board's failings oh, on? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Um, now this is uh, option 1B that's from uh, engineering reports. Um, basically 8 inch to, to 12 inches um, all the way down to um, project they bring the majority of hydrants into, into compliance. Um, if not, being more successful than that, depending on how, how well this works out. Um, recommended in the engineering report as necessary. Um, this is a project that the state has kind of hung their hat on that if the town shows progress towards this, that um, they will not impose a moratorium on connections. Um, then it'll be up to the town itself to decide if new connections could happen or not. So this would not, yeah, so not only fix our issue with the hydrant, but potentially open up connections. Open up connections. Yeah, potentially. I think that we have to do that. And the old line stays in place to yes. be used. Yes. Correct? Yeah, because we don't know where the old line yeah. is. We just know it runs from the tank to Route 4, but it goes across country. And if we had to dig it up, we'd have to get permission, probably move some trees. This way we can keep that line in place. 
while we install the new one and it would follow Cox District and then Route 4. So then future maintenance would also be a lot easier, <clears throat> which I think the sewer line runs, a, runs over there too, right? Yeah. Yeah. This to me is the key yeah. project. I think everybody. Yeah. It's done. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next one is a new water storage tank. Um, having this storage would be very bit beneficial. Um, increased water pressure, um, et cetera, et cetera. The major area on this is trying to find the land where the tank could go, and then if it's on private property, negotiating a potential price and easement or whatever else would be the case. Um, and depending on if it's federal land, private land, those negotiations could um, take more than a little while to, to solve. Um, and then also, I don't think we know the Route 4 project, how successful that will be. Um, originally, the engineer talked about if you did Route 4, would this tank need to be necessary or could it be a project in, in the future? Um, so it's kind of, you know, uh, we don't need it this at this moment, um, but we'll probably, we will need it sometime in the future. I don't think this should be part of the present on um, just because it's too tangential, tangential on acquiring the land and everything. Yeah. And, and I don't want to be borrowing more than we need to right now. Okay. Yeah, I concur with Susan. I think this is a nice to have. I think we need to investigate you know what it looks like to acquire those properties the property one of the four sites um and that'll decide that'll determine how expensive how expensive it is yeah okay. i agree so we have the property okay. um and then what we kind of included um upgrades to water mains um ongoing infrastructure maintenance um and these are things that just are probably more likely to be found in um, future water budgets where it's paid by the users and we allocate certain money each year to capital reserves to build up um, a nice so we can go in there or have it just in the budget and we're doing updates every single year to this um, rather than having a one off capital project because this. These will never go away. The moment we fix all the pipes, we'll go back and fix the ones we, we did originally. Um, so my recommendation would these be more kind of year-to-year -year projects and, and build up capital reserves for them. Agreed. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, are there any other capital projects we want to talk about that we haven't highlighted or anyone from the public who wants to um, have input on these capital projects or others? I would just make one comment, but because you're not putting the replacing the water mains in the village on this, I'm not a village resident. When I was walking out with Chris, I said to him the other day, if they replace every water main in the village, that's going to be an exceptional expense to every person connected, because I believe they're responsible from the main to their house. And that would mean every single village resident yeah. would get hit with a even larger impact. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's something, Byron, that we're, at, it, once we own the water company, it will be a lot easier for us to um, manage those projects and how that's rolled out. I know when um, Craig, the engineer, was here, we had talked to him about what funding is available. There's some federal funding available now to replace certain pipes depending on their age, their condition, and what they're made out of. Um, and so the sooner we own it and the sooner we know what those connections are, um, you know, we can help folks replace them. Um, I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. I'm not a village resident. Yeah. I, I'm a firm believer in the water district and the user base for that type of project. Yeah. I, the caveat is, I do believe it's a town responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments on the capital projects? No, sounds like we're in agreement. Okay. Um, should we? So I think the other thing the board needs to talk about too is um, we have kind of the idea of what it'll cost per year for interest and, and principal, um, and then kind of how you want the remaining fees to be paid for, um, and what kind of formula you want to use to figure out that number. 
um, whether it is a flat fee, so everyone pays the same amount of money across the board, whether it's based every, on- Sorry, every parcel. Every parcel, sorry. A, yeah, every parcel um, pays it across the board, or if it's based on the appraisal of their house, and then kind of as the tax rate is, people pay a percentage based on the cost needed towards um, the house, um, doing some rough math. The numbers are in the ballpark of being the same, depending on, you know, obviously the appraised value of your house. Um, so the current average appraisal house um, off the 2025 grand list is about $528,000. Um, and that's at 60 something percent of that yes. actual value. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we want to that conversation now, what the board's thinking of. Well, maybe we talked through what the pros and cons are for having a flat rate versus a yeah. proportionate rate. I don't know if anybody has the knee jerk reaction. Susan? I, I, my feeling is either way. Why? What'd you say, Susan? I couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry. I, I felt that it should go by a set, the assessed value and not a flat charge per parcel. Um, right. I, I just think that's the fairest way. I agree. But, you know, I think assessed value. I think non-users obviously pay less than users, myself. I've heard quite a bit from people saying that too, but that's gonna throw a wrench in the works what you guys have figured out on paper, but. Oh. Well, actually we'll be paying, what users will be paying a usage fee, money in there for capital projects and paying the assessed value. Right, yeah. but for the straight bond, if you're just talking about the bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what Greg is saying. Right. And I, you know, Greg, I, I have to say I've, I've struggled with this because I'm obviously not on water, but, um, and I know everyone's prepared when we have another discussion later in the year, I'll be on a different side of it. But um, I just think that it's so vital for this town to have a working water system. And I feel that even though I live in the boonies of South Woodstock, um, that I'm part of that. You know, the, the fire protection, the ability to grow the town and have housing available to the people that work here, um, to me outweigh the um, fact that I'm going to be paying for something I don't use directly. And it has not been an easy decision for me. <laughs> well, I'm pretty stubborn about it. I don't want, I think the non-users should pay less. I think we, with, we're going to have to pay something because it's a town thing, but I think non-users should pay less because they're still going to be, as you know, responsible to do their own wells. And it's the same with the sewer plants too, our own sewers. Um, we won't get any help from the town when my well goes. No, and I, I think the sewer is a different, I mean, in my mind, the water, I mean, we put in a well, our pump got hit by lightning, we had to replace that, but we haven't, you know, I don't think we have a huge capital expense looming over us like you do with your own septic system. So you have to drill. Greg, do you have a, and, do you have a sense of like what you think that means, non-users paying? <sighs> Less. As far as a percentage, I don't have. A well, problem. no, I mean, like, do you have a? Is there a is there a formula to go by? Is there? Um... No, I mean, we've we've worked a little bit with our the sewer plant on a formula, but the the Being more you the water. yeah, it's a different yeah. We've also talked about using, you know, the local options tax, some of the local options tax revenue towards the bonds for these projects, which would lessen the burden for yeah. everybody. Um, yeah. And that going after this original bond, everything else would be paid by users yeah. um, going forward and that the rates would increase to kind of build up those capital reserves for future projects. And as we talked about, Greg, the, rate, the rates need to go up. They have to go up. They've been undercharged for 
decades. Um, and I think all folks that are on water are, are very much aware of that, that their bills are, are gonna go up significantly and they are gonna pay more than the non-users as they should. I get the users and I get how they're gonna go up, but I still think as far as the infrastructure go, non-users should pay less than Eric, can we run some models of different, I mean, does that make sense to even do? Yeah. You're not saying they shouldn't pay anything, Greg, just no, to clarify. No, I'm not. I, it's too much. I've heard a lot of people say they don't want to pay anything, uh, which is normal. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I feel uh, so like probably we should pay a percentage because it does it is part of the whole town. Well, do you think it's probably just like not knowing the number and then that too. if we knew the number, then it might be an easier thing to anchor to. Yep. Okay, so maybe we can get some modeling together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that we can walk through what, what feels appropriate. And the other question I've been asked is how much tax revenue are we going to lose? Eric has that. From you have that. Okay. Yeah, acquiring the aqueduct as well as say we do the, say we do buy Vondell Valley. Yep. So Vondell, uh, it's currently assessed at about thirty thousand dollars change. Uh, the aqueduct uh, pays the town thirty eight thousand dollars change in tax revenue. Um, what I'm telling everyone is we currently pay more than that in interest and principal on the debts each year through user fees and through hydrant fees. Um, so immediately when the town acquires the aqueduct and the debt goes away, that cost is going to go away to the users as well. So it should be a net benefit immediately at that point. Uh, further, we pay between ten and twenty thousand dollars each year to get their water readings for our sewer billing. That number obviously will go away as well. Um, so even though we'll lose some revenue, we're actually going to cut more expenses than we are going to lose revenue um, through the acquisition. Now that revenue would be just for the first year or because I mean every year we get revenue in tax money back from them. Yeah, every year, but I mean every year we also pay the interest rates, every year we also pay the principal, every year we also pay the, the sewer uh readings as well. Um so it's each year's gonna be about the same. And if you know, if we don't buy it and they do the route four for five million dollars and go for a bond for that, I mean, that interest rate itself is going to be significant, um, high more than, much higher than anything, you know, currently on. Of which non-users are going to pay a portion of that. Through the hydrogen fees. Well, through yeah. the hydrogen fees. And, yes. and the municipal buildings. Yeah. yeah. As a resident, you can, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. We're not going to pay you for the time you're talking, but that's fine. <laughs> my salary. Over yeah, my overtime. There you go. Hi, uh, Kitty Core here, um, Southwood Stock resident. I kind of agree with Greg, and I don't have a question as much as I have uh, just a quick statement. As I know a lot of people in Southwood Stock in that area that have lived there like pretty much their entire existence and are non uh, residents of the, um, of, um, and I've heard a lot of this about people that live in that area are, are upset and don't want to pay the same amount because they feel like why are we paying for something that only the village um, is, um, is, is it needs for the, with the water system, but also on the, on the other hand, to be like devil's advocate about that. Um, I also feel like when they have a fire at their house and need the fire department to come up and there's, and, or have the, the hydrants aren't working, they're going to want us to be have the water system up and running. So it's like, it, it's like a double-edged sword there. So how do we appease them with like giving them either percentage of the amount or do we do it by excess assess value but um of the home but that doesn't involve like the the von uh what did you say the, the von dow is a, a different um a whole different animal within itself but um i feel i've heard that a lot over the last few weeks like to talk to the people and people like in my area and like on 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 the hill um on church hill where i grew up um so i don't know i feel like it's gonna this whole thing's gonna filibuster if we don't like find a way to um, make it almost I like to say fair is the wrong word, but make it like even. So I'll say even like the worst worst word, but like make it so that it's uh, like it's gonna. I feel like it's gonna be just like the STL where it's gonna go. It's gonna go halfway. Like the vote is gonna vote yes, we want this, and the 
town's going to vote no unless we, like we come up with some scenario and you just talk about coming up with some type of um like not uh, some um stats so we can start showing people how much they'll be paying compared to the people in uh and for the in the village so that it's uh, so it's understood because I feel like a lot of the old school people in South Woodstock that have lived there for like 30, 40 years aren't going to want this and they're really going to start rearing their head up at it. And I not, um, I'm only saying this because I've lived there my whole life and I know all these people, Greg's included in that. And I'm, I'm not saying this is a bad way. I'm saying it's this new other people that we've lived there a long time. And we I know that that's going to be a real sticking point that I don't know how to solve that with, but figuring out some kind of way to show people the different stats, people like my mother or someone who's like, who's lived there, uh, Wally Chamberlain, like people who've lived there like a long time and but don't under, really completely understand it like we do, that's going to be like the point that's going to be hardest. People that like aren't even coming to these meetings, but that really should be. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I think that's helpful, Kitty. No, yeah. I appreciate that, and I and I think that sentiment mm -hmm. is. Uh, I'm really I'm honored for this, obviously, because I work here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the that's like the people that are gonna be like the hardest to get on board. But if we don't do that, it's gonna the whole thing's gonna filibuster because it's gonna be like the town says yes, the vill or the town says no, the village says yes, and it's gonna be a big flop like we had for with the STRs and yeah. everything and with the school and everything. I mean, I guess I. I think we're in a really tricky point, and I brought this up, and we all brought this up a few meetings ago. You know, the taxes from the education funding formula going up have made it really impossible for us to be able to do the work we need to in town. Yeah. Um, and that situation is is, I mean, hopefully resolving, but who knows? But I think the frame that I'm trying to look at it as is nobody, whether they're users or non-users, whether they send their kids to school, don't send their kids to school, nobody wants their tax bills to come up. Everyone loves living here. Nobody wants to pay <laughs> more money to live here. It's becoming increasingly expensive and unaffordable, especially when we're thinking about how do we attract firefighters? How do we attract teachers? How do we attract all these people? Um, and I would really hope that, you know, especially people who have lived here a really long time, understand the importance and the value of all of us agreeing how important the future is. Oh, yeah. And that for a long time, we've maybe been held back by our reluctance to make some of these larger, harder decisions. Exactly. And it's hard because they are so, there's so some of the people, I'm not saying, I'm saying being very broad about this, but like, I don't want to, don't want to move to the future, but are kind of stuck in there, our little, bubble that we live in in South Woodstock and they'll see all the things that need to be done to improve our infrastructure in our town and I think that's also hard a hard um a hard lesson that we need to with the blood everybody saw everything happened in 10 days and all of that but it's a it's a hard lesson that people need to learn and it's something that we need to come somehow to figure out how to explain to them better so that they really know that this is like the right step to move forward oh thank you I, I just Oh, how are they going to feel if we don't do these infrastructure projects and there's a fire downtown and because we don't have enough water we don't put out the fire the village burns down and the property values you don't think it's i think it's hypothetical <laughs> I, I agree with you no I, it's they're going to be bad and they're going to be like oh why well, then they'll look back in the hindsight oh well we should have done that oh well, yeah so it's yeah, if I, if I could just quickly, um, I think to Laura's point earlier, we don't want the pursuit of perfection to ruin the good. You know, I think like this is never going to be perfect. We're never going to find the perfect formula that we're going to make every single resident happy. Um, we're not going to tell someone they can't be on the Vondel because they're not a water user. But, it was, you know, like I, I, you can't go into the village because you don't like, I mean, I think we're, if we if we try to aim to make everyone happy, we're gonna you know make no one happy. And I think the the board needs to um, just work to figure out what they think is the fairest way forward. Um, I think we've been having those conversations, and you know then it's our job to inform people and advocate and, and explain why you made the decision. Um, and that's probably the next step. I mean, we could spend literally years working on the best you know best rate. But I think at the end of the day, this is something the town needs to own, and the quicker we own it. Uh, the better it is for everyone. So, um, Barbara. 
to shed a light on. I just have a question. I just have a question. Um, um, you said a flat rate or a percentage. Are there are there no uh, water uh, gauges on houses? Like how much you, some person may use twenty gallons a week, and some people may use two hundred. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we're talking. About, I think we're talking about two different things. Uh, when we talk about our percentage or a flat fee, we're talking about the capital projects that will be bonded or asked to be bonded on the December 10th vote. When it comes to normal user rates, if you have a meter, you are charged by usage of the meter times the rates, and that's how much a user pays each quarter. And that's if all these houses don't have meters? Some meters, some houses don't have meters. Because I would have to say that you know, uh, like living in Albuquerque or Phoenix, you damn well have a meter on that water because water is precious. And we can't just take water around here as, a, you know, it's always going to be here. Mm -hmm. I think there has to be meters and it has to be titrated to your use. If you want to use a thousand gallons a week, you're going to pay a whole lot more than somebody who's using a hundred gallons a week. And I think to our point, the aqueduct, Need to have the time or the staff or the interest in ensuring everyone had meters. And if that's a goal of the residents and the board, then we'll direct funding and staff to make that a, a reality. Well, I would I would think that that would be very important to preserve our water here in the we'll state have to of spend Vermont. Spend more money to make money. Well, <laughs> I don't think. In, well, I think Aqueduct even has a sense of. I I think it also. Right. I think it also stops people from wasting their water. Yes, absolutely. And that's that's a big thing, you know, like. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do we want to look at any rough numbers? Um, what? Yes. Not, you mean this minute or at the next meeting? Sorry. Next, next meeting, okay. I think. We're going to get asked that in a couple scenarios. hours. I know. Specifically. I can guarantee it. And I, I think so too. And I think we have to, we have a meeting at, for, at, at 530 at the South Woodstock Fire Station where Greg and I <laughs> will be talking to people. <laughs> Might be worth the show. Um, <laughs> and I think we just have to say that we're meeting, Blackboard is meeting again Tuesday the 15th and we will have more answers and, and we'll look at some different scenarios. So what scenarios does, do the boards want to look at? One thing that I think has come that I'm not aware of is how much the rates are going to go up if the WAC stays in place and does all the improvements. And how much is it going to be if the town does the we, same? We have those numbers. Okay, that's what I want. So uh, I'll use a board member's example. Um, currently, they pay about $72 a quarter for usage. Uh, under... <laughs> um, well, two people here are on our water, so we can do that. Um, Spoiler alert. <laughs> so um, they pay $300 a year in water usage. Um, that will double to $600, so go from $72 to $144 a quarter under that. But also the, the big driver is the um, hydrants going from $30,000 for taxpayers to $319,000 a taxpayer. If everything's approved. That's what the, that's the aqueduct saying, this is the only way they can afford to do the Route 4 capital project. Um, so that's what we're looking at, taxpayers seeing a $957,000 increase, hydrant fees, um, and then a double of their uh, water rates this year. My assumption is they'd continue to go back each year to increase rates um, to make sure they had enough money going forward. Now, have they talked about just disbanding the hydrants? Shutting off the hydrant. So that's something that could happen. Uh, private water company does not have to have the hydrants. The assumption is the state would step in and say they already exist. You have to keep them going. Uh, but we don't know what that would entail that fight. Uh, they could turn off some hydrants if they wanted to. Um, it goes back to the point of when we don't own the water system, we have no control over what happens to our water. Yeah. But they could correct me if I'm wrong, they could shut the hydrants off and then they have water supply enough to add connections. They could, and Is then the insurance rates in the village will go through the roof yeah. because there's no water there. And and we would lose ISO points too. The fire yep. department would yeah. lose ISO points. I, I understand that, but I think a lot of people don't 
understand yeah. that that's a possibility that could happen. Um, so go back to what scenarios the board would want to see. Uh, I think it's worth doing the bond rate at the entire town assessed value versus per property. Mm -hmm. And then maybe with non water rate, non water users, well, people with their own wells or water condo water systems. Um, paying a different percentage. I don't know what. Lesser, not more, lesser. Oh, okay. <laughs> 125, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what percentage we want to. I, I don't know. You, you, does non-users pay 75% that adds 25% on the users? I mean, I do think that there's I'm just throwing that out. I know when I was doing the analysis for the sewer, I believe the assessed value of the properties not on water are higher than the assessed property value of the properties on water. And I could be wrong. About I don't that. have those numbers in front of me. That would be a pretty big. So even if the non-water users are less, the money coming in might be more. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. I, hear, I, I wasn't it. sure it makes no, sense I get to what me. You're saying. So. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So, I mean, I think just because we have a one board member that, and and we are getting asked that. We got asked that yesterday morning. We've been talked. It's been asked today at this meeting. Um, you know, I do think we have to look at it. Okay. And then contributions. We'll get some of the other funding too. Contributions from the local options tax. Correct. Yep. Both taxes. Thank you. Which is just climbing as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> I know with all those people, as much as we complain about the tourists. Every one of them. Yeah, they. Yeah, I, I do every time. The local option tax is yeah, we're in. Uh, <laughs> we're collecting money when they spend. Um, okay. So I do have analysis of. Um, what it'll look like for a flat fee and uh, based on appraisal, but I don't have anything yet for uh, it being uh, split out between users and non-users yet. Okay. Have you got access to this on your little box there tonight? Um, or do we need to print it up so I can have it in front of me? Well, is it on the, can you send me? The is breakdown? Is it on the- um, Yeah, I emailed to the board over the weekend. Yeah, okay, perfect. Should we go I'll over it now? Service. If they're going to talk about it tonight at the meeting. Right. Sorry. I can see that. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to if people want to. Yeah. I think we can anchor people too if you feel okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I feel like if, if Susan and Greg are going to talk about it tonight, we should probably talk about it in public meeting too. I don't know if we're going to talk about it, but I'm damn well, certain it's going to get asked. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, Jim, let's off again. One day we'll have a clicker. One day we'll have another meeting with goals and then we'll, <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll set the goals and then. An annual review for the town manager. <laughs> oh, heck. <laughs> That's still quite small. Where would I find it? Okay. They're very conservative. So this is what you're looking at. Listen. Yes. Oh, okay. It's not on the website. It's in the, it was the, it was the yeah. So these are kind of, I took, um, to print it. Conservative numbers, so higher than what the engineering reports originally laid out because those are over a year old. And then if these votes are successful, uh, we wouldn't go out for bid until probably the spring. Um, so to try to give us some wiggle room on what the cost may actually be. So well replacement went up from 800 up to 900. Bundell is 1.6, that's what we agreed to with the aqueduct. Uh, the Route 4 went from, I think, 4.3 to 5, and Elm Street went from about 650 to 8, just, again, to give us some wiggle room and to be kind of as conservative as possible with uh, these numbers. Um, I have a space for revenue. Um, as we've talked about repeatedly, the town would be eligible for grants for a lot of this work uh, after an acquisition. I'm not including them because it's not guaranteed, and what we want to do is be as 
transparent and forthright as possible. So we want to give numbers that kind of don't allude to kind of a wish um, rather than a reality we're facing this day. Um, so of a $8.3 million um, bond, um, the principal would be about $276,000. The interest um, at year one will be about $440,000. That interest will decrease each year because as the principal gets paid down, the interest will obviously be less. Um, but again, to give kind of a, an idea of worst case scenario, um, that's number would be, which means we have to raise about $716,000 a year. Um, going down to funding options outside of a bond, um, the board has talked about in the past using some of the local option tax to go towards these payments. Um, we estimate that the new local option tax that got passed in March would be about $200,000. Um, the local option tax that passed in 2016 has roughly been around $350,000 to $4,000, depending on how successful the year has been. Um, so then the allocations here depend on how much the board wants to use from, you know, 0%, um, you know, all the way up to 50%. Um, so the board can kind of decide how they want to play this out. Uh, but just to give a... I just wanted to make a note there, Eric, that we won't know how much the new local options tax is making, but we are expected to get that first payment in November. Yes. For the first quarter, we've had local options yeah. from July 1st to September 1st. Is that a quarter? September 30th. Yes. Yeah. Um, so in a scenario where we use 33% of both, um, just to kind of get a sense of what we're talking about here, um, that would come down to a flat cost for all taxpayers of about $277. Um, and then if you base it on um, appraisal, about $54.40 per $100,000. Um, in a world where the average um, appraised value is $548,000, you're looking at $303 a year compared to the flat tax that is $277. Um, so it falls kind of pretty close to each other as you're talking about a um, year to year cost per tax per, per parcel. Um, and then just to get a sense for everyone, if we increase these allocations, cost goes down uh, significantly to 226 to 247. And if you got rid of these funding options, hold on, I'll tell this stop working. Come on. Crashed it. Hmm. Why well, it's not working, Scully? Like yeah. those numbers? Yeah. Um, so we're aware we got no income from any of the local option taxes. Um, potential cost to residents, 377 um, $75 per $100,000 appraisal. Uh, $413 per year per parcel. Um, so those are kind of numbers we're talking about um, as we go forward with those two options. And then you can play with these numbers. Um, again, you do a quarter of both, $300 flat, and then $330. Um, or a five hundred fifty thousand dollar appraisal. So roughly, you're figuring three hundred dollars, give or take. Rate. Yeah. For everybody, the way you got to figure here. Yeah, I mean, you go if you go like I don't know. Again, we went to fifty percent. Um, you're talking like low two hundreds. If you go to zero percent, talking high three hundred. So that's the range we're talking about, regardless of what the allocation is. Um, and just for a reference, uh, the new 1%, uh, the board allocated at the infrastructure. So obviously this would fit underneath that. Um, and the original local option tax was economic development, which again, um, and prosperity would suck. Having a water system is obviously a need to have economic development in the village 
uh, currently where it is right now. Uh, questions on this? No comments. I mean, I think we have a lot, we know we have a lot of infrastructure um, coming in the future. So I would be hesitant to, to allocate a significant amount of local options tax funding to it, but I think 25 to 33% could make sense. Um, I think half would be way too much though. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the sewer, we've got the Route 12 bridge fixes. Yeah. Yep. So much. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Another question. Who's going to run this? I mean, we're looking at capital gains, but who do we employ? What are the employment costs that we're going to improve with our own water system? Yep. So uh, originally, we'll take on a lot of the aqueduct staff. Uh, one, legally, we need to. Uh, we need to have a water license operating the system. Um, and then as we go forward, after one year, our staff can be licensed as water technicians and run the system themselves as they run their wastewater plant. Um, when we talk to other communities in Vermont who have bought private water companies, they've had it fall underneath their wastewater crew um, without issues. Um, because it is, they kind of do go hand in hand. Um, so it would fall under our public works. Um, it would fall under then my discretion and the select board discretion as well. Um, so you'd see all salaries currently are paid by the, the rates they, they uh, get each year. Um, so there'll be no increase on that end. Uh, there may be some savings as we can commingle some, some responsibilities. So for example, they have staff who does billing. We have staff that does billing. So our staff can probably do all the billing. They can probably do all the receiving. Um, so that we cross savings and some of those things as well. Presently, the sewer department has its own budget and it pays for actually even a portion of Eric's salary is paid for out of the sewer budget. So, you know, there, there will be an increase and that's paid for by the sewer users, not those of are septic. Yeah, sewer, sorry, not yeah, those sure. of us with the septic system. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> but, and so I think the similar thing would happen with the water department. Everybody keeps kind of talking about a district, but it is already kind of a district of its own by the fact that we have a separate budget and costs are specifically allocated. So I, I think after the bond, there's not going, the costs of running the water company are going to be borne by the users and not, not increased in the taxes. It's a good point by Susan. Uh, legally, uh, we consider a sewer department or a water department a utility billing. And what you have to do, you can only raise enough revenue to offset the costs you have that year. Uh, and it's always paid by user rates. So that's how the budget will be set up. So users will pay the cost of administrating the water system year to year. Any comments on this? Okay, so I can try to work on some kind of formula that would take in consideration a split between users and non-users. Um, I'll see if I can get it done by Tuesday, um, but hopefully on Tuesday we can have a sense of what the board wants to do um, for the allocation of funding options um, and all that stuff. And then we also dive into uh, usage rates as well. And that means at six o'clock on Tuesday here, or you can join by Zoom. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming to the meeting. It yeah, means a lot. You. Know, this is a middle of the day meeting. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No minutes. So, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Susan wasn't there, and she handed them. I didn't really give them to you without enough time. So I can like look over them. Sorry, I'm like crazy busy. No, you're.